Dear students, today I'm going to deliberate on the topic Psychoderma or Biocontrol Agent. Pathogen, pests and weeds are the enemies of agriculture and forestry. Now, this can be controlled by various methods. I will mention only two methods over here. The chemical method by using chemicals like fungicides, pesticides, nematicides and viricides. Biological control, here one organism can be used to control the growth of another organism by exploiting parasitic or the predatory relationship. And this can also be done by using microorganisms like bacteria, fungi and viruses and also by using the botanicals. Let us look into biological control. Biological control is one of the methods of plant disease management. It forms an important component of integrated pest management. Now, what is actually biological control? This is another way of uh, describing. Biological control of plant pathogen, it refers to the total or partial destruction of the pathogens by other antagonistic microorganisms. For example, trichoderma, penicillium, bacillus, and pseudomonas. You can see the pigs over here. This is of trichoderma, penicillium, bacillus, and pseudomonas. So such microorganisms that are used to control the diseases caused by pathogens and pests like insects and nematodes are called as microbial biopesticides. Now, why do we need biological control agents? Let us compare with the chemicals. Then it will be quite clear. Chemical pesticides, you know, these are implicated in environmental and human health problems. It means that when the farmer uses this chemical pesticides on his farm, then it causes environmental pollution and it also causes human health problems. It is also very expensive and um, these chemical pesticides have to be applied every time the farmer has to have his, own, his crop. Then also this chemical pesticides, they are toxic to both the beneficial as well as the pathogenic species. Now let us look into biological control agents. Now these are not at all toxic to human beings, nor are they toxic to animals. Also they do not pollute the environment. Also they are host specific and they are not as costly as chemical pesticides. That is, it is quite economical. Now let us look into one particular biocontrol agent that is trichoderma. A little bit about the history of trichoderma. In 1671, trichoderma was first studied in Germany. In 1794, it was identified by Persson. In 1927, Gilman and Abbott identified four species of trichoderma. In 1932, Willing, he was the first person to demonstrate that trichoderma can parasitize that fungi which causes the wilt of pigeon pea. So pigeon pea is our red gram. Now let us look into the taxonomical position of trichoderma. Dear students, you know that when the fungi, fungal life cycle is being studied, there were some fungi wherein only the asexual phase was discovered. And um, it was not sure whether the sexual phase was present or not. So such fungi, they have been included in deuteromycetes. Same is the story with trichoderma. A sexual stage was uh, studied at one time and later on the sexual stage was discovered. So it has got two ways of classification and also it has got two names. Let us look into that. So uh, the asexual stage has been classified as it belongs to kingdom fungi, division Ascomycota, subdivision Deuteromycotina, class Hypomycetes, order Monilials, family Moniliaceae, genus Trichoderma. And when the sexual stage was uh, discovered, then it was classified as fung kingdom fungi, division is Ascomycota, subdivision is Ascomycotina. Class Pyrenomycetes, order Spherials, family Hypocreaceae, genus Hypocrea. So Trichoderma and Hypocrea are the name of one single fungi. Now let, let us look into the microscopic features of Trichoderma. So in this pic you can see that Trichoderma, the hyphae is highlined and it is uh, septate. 
how does it reproduce so it reproduces by producing the conidia so you can see the conidia they are oval and they are uninucleate now these conidia are produced on the conidia force and this conidia force they are hyaline and they are branch trichoderma also produces uh, thick walled and resistant uh, spores which are called as the chlamydospores it also has got the phyllides which are hyaline and you can see that they are flask shaped and they have got a inflated or swollen base in the center you can see a petal dish wherein there is a culture of the trichoderma in the center you can see it is uh, uh, green in color that is because the it, uh, it is showing the conidia and this conidia are green in color a few points about trichoderma so trichoderma is a very effective biological means for plant disease management especially of the soil borne diseases trichoderma is a free living and it is saprophytic fungus and it is common in the soil that is it is soil inhabiting fungi and especially in the soil it is found in the root ecosystem that is the immediate zone surrounding the roots that is called as rhizosphere now you can see a pic of the petadesh with the trichoderma culture and you can see a test tube plant with the trichoderma so the third point is that you know trichoderma is highly interactive in which uh, environments in the roots in the soil and also in the foliar environments that is that is the zone surrounding the leaves which is called as a phyllosphere there also it is very uh, interactive this trichoderma it reduces the growth the survival and the infections which are caused by pathogens by different mechanisms let us look into the different mechanisms they are competition antibiosis mycoparasitism hyphal interactions and enzyme secretion so let us look into one by one so this particular pic okay it gives you a glimpse of all the different mechanism of actions shown by trichoderma so here's the trichoderma uh, which is uh, asserting the biological control mechanism and uh, these are various ways that is it shows mycoparasitism it shows production of antibiotics that is antibiosis it is active in the rhizosphere it competes for nutrients and space it produces the different enzymes like chitinases and glucanases it induces resistance in the plant it uh, it is an endophyte so it shows uh, endophytism it um, uh, makes the plant you know to uh, to tolerate against the stress and it also helps in the root development of the plants so this is a glimpse of all the mechanisms of action so we can look into it one by one the first mechanism of action is competition so trichoderma it competes with the pathogen for the food and the essential elements so it displaces and suppresses the growth of the pathogen population in the rhizosphere and thus it reduces the disease development for example when so, when soil treatment with trichoderma harrisianum spores uh, was done it was found that it suppressed the pathogen fusarium oxysporum species now the second mechanism is mycoparasitism and uh, um, lysis now trichoderma is a fungi it in turn it grows and it overpowers the growth of other fungi so this phenomenon is called as mycoparasitism okay and how it does it it does by means of lysis so here's a pic wherein you can see this is the pythium the blue color this is the hyphae of the pythium and that which is uh, coiling around this pythium is our trichoderma so you can see how closely the coils are formed you know and it has come into close contact with the pythium and wherever and you know what happens is that wherever it comes in contact the trichoderma comes in contact with the pythium then it spreads out to produce the special structures which are called as the apressoria i can show you a little bit so you can see over here in the soil the trichoderma is growing over here and there's a pathogen as soon as the pathogen begins to grow this trichoderma hyphae approaches the pathogen itself and it forms the coil and you can see how it spreads out this is called as the apressoria 
from this approach area again multiple hyphae are produced so this hyphae will penetrate the pathogen other method of penetrating is by means of hostoria and you know that the fungal cell wall it is made up of the chitin and the pectin so what it will do is the trichoderma it also produces the enzymes okay special enzymes that are that is the lytic enzymes by name chitinase glucanase and pectinase so this what they will do is they will actually degrade the wall cell wall of the pathogen okay and finally it brings about the it digests the cell wall of the pathogen and brings about the lysis okay so this we will look into uh, in a form of the point so the antagonist trichoderma hyphae it either grows along with the host hyphae or it coils around it and it secretes different lytic enzymes such as chitinase glucanase pectinase and these are all involved in the process of mycoparasitism now if you break down that interaction into different uh, into a number of uh, steps you can see um the trichoderma grows towards the pathogen that is by the process of chemotaxis okay then it coils coiling of the hyphae around the pathogen takes place extracellular enzymes that is chitinase glucanase and pectinase are produced apressorial like structures uh, are produced and with the help of which it penetrates the pathogen penetration happens even by hostoria then macularization of the pathogen takes place and finally lysis of the pathogen takes place dear yes, students trichoderma is also called as a hyperparasite example of such interactions are you know trichoderma herzianum trichoderma viridae they act against fusarium oxysporum they act against fusarium roseum fusarium solanae phytophthora colocasia then pythium sclerotium rolfsii and rhizoctonia so what it does it it parasitizes the mycelia and it inhibits the growth and the spread of the pathogens so here i have shown a pic where it this uh, hyphae belongs to rhizoctonia solanae and you can see how trichoderma has completely coiled on rhizoctonia and, and it is actually strangulating it this pic i've already explained to you this is another pic you can see the trichoderma and coiling and you can see over here the the cell wall of the pathogen has already been digested the third mechanism is by means of antibiosis that is it produces antibiotics okay so trichoderma produces uh, different metabolites some of them are diffusible inhibitors you know like antibiotics and toxins are produced for example trichothecin sesquiterpene trichodermin and viridin along with this even volatile inhibitors like sesquiterpene alcohols and ketones are produced okay and these are excreted and these have a harmful effect on the other organisms that act as the pathogens so this is a, a pic about the uh, growth of uh, this one trichoderma like uh, the antagonism it's about the antagonism relationship that it shares with the pathogens so you can see in this petri dish you can see the wells are over here and whatever white thing you, you can observe this is the trichoderma so in this well these three wells trichoderma has been inoculated and the white what you see is the mycelium of the trichoderma now after this petri dish is kept for incubation you can see over here in this uh, three um, wells over here the pathogen has also been inoculated after incubation what do you observe over here there is no pathogen at all what has happened is the trichoderma has completely overpowered it has not it has prevented the growth of the pathogen itself and in all these three wells there is profuse growth of trichoderma now let us look into the next point that is benefits of trichoderma what are the benefits of trichoderma so the first benefit is that it acts as a plant growth promoter now trichoderma 
Uh, the different strains of trichoderma they solubilize the phosphates and the micronutrients which are present in the soil and it makes it available to the plant so the plant can uh, easily uptake uh, these phosphates and micronutrients and therefore it can show robust growth their application to the plants it increases the number of the deep roots and thereby what happens is it increases the plant's ability to resist the drought the more the number of deep roots the plant will be able to absorb water more efficiently and also it will be able to uptake the micronutrients and the various phosphates etc more efficiently so here you can see a pic over here so this is the pic showing the root of a plant where trichoderma has not been used so there is a very sparse growth of the roots whereas over here you can see the profuse growth of the roots because trichoderma has been used so this is another a pick so here you can see that uh, these are the bean plants you can see the roots of the bean plants where trichoderma has not been used they very very poorly developed whereas when trichoderma is used you can see a very robust growth of the roots Now this is another pic to demonstrate uh, the benefit of trichoderma treatment. So here is a plant. It is showing some diseased symptoms, and just look into the roots. The roots are very very few. That is, it, that is, it has got sparse roots. Now trichoderma is growing wherever the root is there. And then in the rhizosphere region, the trichoderma is growing. When some uh, when some pathogen approaches the root you know to attack the root of the plant this um, this trichodermal hyphae it by means of chemotaxis it uh, goes and it coils around the hyphae of the pathogen and uh, and this uh, this process we have already discussed in the previous slides so that is how it protects the plant from this pathogen similarly it also makes available the water also makes available the nutrients and the micronutrients so after trichoderma treatment what happens is the plant recovers and it shows very healthy growth and you can see how much that there is a very profuse development of the roots the second point or second benefit is that about disease control trichoderma is a potent biocontrol agent and it is used extensively for soil borne diseases it has been used successfully against pathogenic fungi which are belonging to various genera like uh, fusarium phytophthora and sclerotia i give i will show you i want to show you some pics about a uh, few uh, fungi uh, which cause diseases to the plants so this is sclerotium uh, rolfsi and it causes stem rot so you can see the symptoms over here and this is you can see this is fusarium and this is you know the tomato plants which have been attacked by fusarium causing the fusarium wilt disease in tomatoes students you can see over here that this uh, this is colocasia which has been attacked by the fungi phytophthora this is phytophthora and just see the symptoms when it attacks uh, attacks the plant you can see these are the necrotic lesions which are there on the leaves so if trichoderma is used then it can control um, the attack by phytophthora colocasia now this is a very interesting pick these are the plants of tomato okay so tomato is attacked by different pathogens see rhizoctona solanae pthm species phytophthora the sclerotium rolfsi macrophomina phaseolina alternaria solanae and botrytis cinerea these are the fungal pathogens you know which will attack the tomato plant but if you apply trichoderma to the soil then it can control all these pathogens Well, you can see the pithium. This this is the uh, pithium, 
and you can see pythium along with phytophthora infestins these are the pathogens and you can see over here these are the normal or healthy seedlings whereas when it is attacked by pythium you can see the damping of disease takes place damping off of seedlings takes place then this is another pic uh, showing the phytophthora this is the phytophthora and it causes the disease in the potato plants the third benefit is that um, trichoderma they are biochemical elicitors of disease what do you mean by this see trichoderma strains they are known to induce resistance in plants okay it produces uh, three classes of compounds and these compounds you know they make the trichoderma uh, by which you know the trichoderma can induce resistance to the uh, resist it, re, sorry re, it induces resistance in the plants so these compounds they induce ethylene production it brings about hypersensitive responses and also other defense related reactions in the plant cultivars also the fourth benefit is as we discussed that trichoderma it produces the enzymes called as uh, chitinase enzyme so what has been done is that the gene that produce the gene which is responsible for production of chitinase enzyme has been identified and it is called as endochitinase gene so this endochitinase gene has been isolated from trichoderma and this has been then by means of genetic engineering you know it has been introduced into tobacco and potato plants so what has happened is now that the tobacco and potato plants they are showing increased resistance to fungal uh, attack and these plants you know uh, which are in which the endocarotenoid gene has been introduced they are called as transgenic plants so these transgenic plants they are highly tolerant even to the foliar pathogens like alternaria alternata alternaria solanae and botrytis cinerea as well as to the soil borne pathogens like rhizopedia species the fifth benefit is that it brings about bioremediation trichoderma strains you know they play an important role in bioremediation of the soil which has been contaminated with pesticides and herbicides this means that but due to continuous use of herbicides and pesticides by the farmers what happens is the soil gets contaminated with this so when trichoderma treatment is given to the soil that is it is added to the soil this trichoderma has got the ability to degrade these wide range of insecticides that, that is uh, organochlorines it can degrade organophosphates and it can also degrade carbonates and it can make the soil healthy so this process is called as bioremediation sixth benefit is that trichoderma it enhances that is it increases the yield of the crop and also the quality of the crop seventh is that trichoderma it boosts the rate of germination of the um, crop plants then eighth point is that it causes an increase in the root length and the shoot length of the crop plants then tenth is that trichoderma promotes healthy growth in the early stages of the crop and this causes an increase in the dry matter uh, dry matter which is uh, um, which symbolizes the healthy growth of the crop the 11th point is that it provides natural and long term immunity to the crops and to the soil and the 12th point which is most important is that it augments nitrogen fixing that is in the soil there are many organisms which um, fix the atmospheric nitrogen and make it available to the plants so if trichoderma is added to the soil then it will cause an increase in the ability of those microorganisms to fix the nitrogen now this is a pic wherein all the different mechanisms of action has been depicted so 
uh, you can see the growth of the plant over here before using trichoderma, after using trichoderma. Okay, so trichoderma competes with the pathogen. This is a pick before the treatment uh, of the plant with uh, trichoderma afterwards. That is here it is showing antibiosis. Here it is showing mycoparasitism. And here that is, you know, when, so, when the soil is treated with the trichoderma, it induces resistance uh, to the plants, you know, uh, in the plants. It induces resistance in the plants and it makes the plant itself uh, to resist the attack of the other fungi. Trichoderma also acts as an endophyte, okay, and that is also beneficial to the plant. Now, let us see what are the different uses of trichoderma, where, where all, in which all diseases trichoderma has been used. There's a quite a big list, you can remember a few of them. So trichoderma can be used as a biocontrol agent in case of damping off caused by pythium species and by Phytophthora species. Then it can be used in case of root rot caused by Pellicularis filamentosa, it can be used when there is seedling blight caused by pythium, collar rot caused by pedicularis rolsi, dry rot caused by macrophomena facioli, charcoal rot caused by macrophomena facioli, loose mud caused by ustilago situatum, carnal bunch diseases, black scurf caused by rhizoctona solani, then foot rots caused by uh, uh, this foot rots which are caused by the fungi. In case of pepper and beetle wine and capsule, capsule rot of several crops. It is also effective against a silver leaf on plum, peach, and nectarine. And in case of Dutch elm disease on elm's honey fungus, that is Armillaria melia, it is um, also effective uh, in botrytis, that is caused by botrytis cinerea. Trichoderma, it polysporum, it also controls the decay of the wood. So you can you can see that trichoderma uh, species, you know, it can be used to control several plant pathogenic fungi. Now let us look, look into the trichoderma formulations. That is, in what form or under what trade name or brand name trichoderma is being sold in the market. So important commercial formulations are available in the name of Sanjibani, Gard, Niprot, Bioderma, etc. So these formulations, they, they have 3 to 10 raised to 6 colony forming units per gram of the carrier material. So this is a table which... Uh, this is a table which shows the available biopesticides in the market. So trichoderma virens, the first uh, uh, column shows the trichoderma species. The second column shows the trade name. The third column shows the pathogens, the target pathogens. And uh, the fourth column shows the crops on which it can be used. So trichoderma virens, trichoderma harzianum, trichoderma uh, harzianum, it, it is available under the trade names of soil guard, plant shield, T22, T22, okay. And the target pathogens are Pythium, Rhizoctonia, then Fusarium, Pythium, Rhizoctonia. And it can be used on ornamental crops, food crops, okay, whether they're grown outside or in the greenhouses. It can be used in case of cucurbit vegetables, flowers, and even in the nursery uh, beds, it can be used for the fodder crops, for the bulb crops, then it can be used in case of horticultural crops, okay. Then in spices uh, and legumes also, mm, yeah. In continuation with this, it is available in the, uh, under the trade name Ecofit, Supervisit, Soil Guard, Root Pro, Tuzal, okay, Acroderma, Biocure, Bioderma, Ecofit, Rakshap, Trichosan. What are the um, trichoderma species? Trichoderma viridae, Harzianum virens, and here are two uh, species uh, um, together being used in Tusal. So these are the various manufacturing companies. Now let us look into the methods of application. The trichoderma has to be used, but how has it to be 
used? What are the different methods of application? So one is street treatment. So mix six to 10 grams of trichoderma powder per kg of the seed just before sowing. Then it can be uh, used for nursery treatment. So apply 10 to 25 grams of trichoderma powder per 100 meter square of the nursery beds. Okay, And uh, along with this, uh, if uh, neem cake and uh, the farmyard manure is applied before the trichoderma is uh, applied, then that will increase the efficacy. Then the trichoderma can be used for uh, cutting and uh, seedling root depth. So 10 grams of trichoderma powder is mixed with 100 grams of well-rotted FYM per liter of water. And the cuttings, you know, and the cutting, the plants which are propagated by means of uh, cuttings and even the seedlings, they can be dipped into this um, for 10 minutes just before planting. Then the fourth method is soil treatment. So 5 kg of trichoderma powder per hectare can be used and this can be applied to the soil and that is called as green manuring. Or what can be done is 1 kg of trichoderma can be added to about 100 kg of farmyard manure and then it can be covered for 7 days uh, with the polythene cover and then it can be sprinkled with water uh, now and every now and then. And this mixture can then be used in the field. That is how the soil treatment can be done. Or directly, the plant treatment can also be done. So what can be done is the soil uh, that is near the stem of the crop plant, you know, that soil, it has to be drenched with trichoderma, 10 grams of uh, trichoderma mixed with one liter of uh, water. In that ratio, uh, the drenching can be done. Now, finally, what are the advantages of using trichoderma and what are and what are the disadvantages of this biocontrol agent? So advantages, uh, trichoderma decreases the disease intensity. It reduces the use of chemical fungicides. It reduces the undesirable effects from the chemical fungicides. It plays a key role in integrated management of diseases. It is safe for the users and the farming community. It provides natural long-term immunity to the crops as well as to the soil. What are the disadvantages of uh, biocontrol agent? They are quite few. They may have deleterious uh, effects on non-target microorganisms. Sometimes what happens, the pathogens may develop resistance to trichoderma. And uh, sometimes what happens is control of the target pathogen. Trichoderma will go and control the pathogen. But then what happens is, what may happen is that uh, some other pathogen may come and replace this. So it may lead to pathogen replacement. Sometimes what happens is due to seasonal and weather conditions may, may make the biocontrol aging effective. Yes, students, I have added a few more slides just for your reference. So you can you can go through these slides for extra reference. So this is also also this slide also to show the mechanism of the action of trichoderma. This is also to show the mechanism of action of trichoderma. Well, thank you. That's it for now. Thank you, dear students.